How do you imagine that the obesity disease causes damage to the heart? I think most folks have an intuition that the obesity disease causes heart attacks. And it's easy to imagine. There's this fat in the bloodstream. Um, it leads to kind of gradual plugging up of the arteries, as you can see in this cutaway here. The fat blob uh, causes the blood vessels and the blood cells to back up. And um, the lack of blood flow to the heart muscle leads to a heart attack. And um, it's not wrong to say that the obesity disease leads to increased risk of heart attack. But that risk actually shows up later in life after there's been a certain degree of obesity for many years. The big risk factor and the more immediate risk factor for our patients who are in their 20s and 30s and 40s is the risk of heart overload going on to congestive heart failure. My name is John Pilcher. I'm a bariatric surgeon in San Antonio and I'm going to talk about the stress that the heart is under with the obesity condition and, um, and how it creates a sense of urgency that we get the obesity disease under control. Now the mechanism by which the obesity disease creates increased demand on the heart is actually pretty obvious or easy to understand. People have excess mass and that's excess mass in terms of fat tissue as well as excess mass in terms of extra muscle to carry that around, extra structure in terms of extra bone, extra kidney, extra liver, and every bit of that excess mass, every kilogram, requires increased blood flow for ongoing support. And importantly, that blood flow is necessary 24-7, even when a person is sitting down, even when they're asleep. So this is a continuous, unrelenting excess demand of 1.3, 1.7, and twice as much as the heart is supposed to pump for that person's age and height. Now that increased demand is multiplied again when that person with the obesity disease is getting up and moving around because of course they're not only moving their normal body mass but they're moving the excess mass as well and again it's physics. Uh, the amount of work required is related to the distance traveled and it's related to the mass that is moved and so the heart for these folks is working overtime all the time and working triple, quadruple over time when they're up and moving or when they're trying to exercise. And here in Texas, we have a saying, it's like a half ton truck hauling a one ton load. And uh, as you can see from this image, that's not a situation that works very well. It's not going to last for a long time. You can do it for a little while. That uh, little motor is gonna pull the load as long as it can, but it's gonna break after a little while. And the way that actually works in the human body, because this is actually a living muscle that's doing the pumping that tries to adapt to what we do, is that uh, the heart initially will try to adapt to this increased load. Uh, and it adapts by pumping a little bit more strongly, it adapts by thickening its walls, and it adapts by increasing the rate at which it pumps. All of these factors uh, can lead to increased blood flow, or what we call cardiac output. And so for some time span, it could be 10 years, it could be 20 years, the heart actually increases its pumping capacity. But here again, this is a muscle, and if it's worked continuously and it's overworked for a very long period of time, then this muscle will begin to fail gradually over time. And that's where the heart failure aspect comes in. So it begins with the heart overload. Initially, the heart compensates, and then the heart begins to fail gradually over time. And this may happen when a person's in their mid-40s. It may not happen until they're in their 60s. Uh, it depends on kind of that person's cardiac genetics as well as their level of overload. But it's very predictable that over time, the heart will become weaker instead of stronger, even as the weight and the demand continue to increase over time. I need to emphasize that even a healthy young heart can only compensate so much for the increased load that the obesity disease brings. The heart can go faster, but only so fast. And the heart can pump more strongly and more volume, but only to a certain extent because there's only a certain amount of room here for the heart muscle and the chambers within the heart. Remember, this is a human chest that has a certain size and a you know, certain container volume. It also has to have the lungs in there. Um, and whereas the obesity condition is happening outside the chest, outside on the frame, um, and can keep growing and growing, unfortunately, the heart cannot. And so the heart will try to compensate, but then it reaches an upper limit where this increased burden of the obesity condition uh, begins to overwhelm the heart. And the more often it overwhelms the heart, the more it leads to long-term heart failure, where the muscle actually begins to weaken and uh, lead to long-term lasting sustained decrease in function. When a person goes from increased heart demand in the early stages of this process into heart failure in the later parts of the process, 
the heart muscle changes from a healthy looking heart as we can see in the schematic diagram to a tired old looking heart and sadly we can have patients who are 40 or 50 years old who have a heart that's functioning as if it were an 80 year old heart and you just don't want to have that because if you get to that stage if you get to the stage of actual heart failure and what's called cardiomyopathy cardiomyopathy is a technical term meaning that the muscle is failing then even if you achieve weight loss at that stage the heart cannot return to fully normal function because it has been damaged and that's a sad situation where it's too late to return to full normal health even if a weight intervention is still a good idea now this heart overload going on to congestive heart failure it feels awful it's hard to get your breath especially when you're up and moving around it's hard to accomplish normal daily activities there tends to be lots of swelling throughout the body especially in the lower part of the body where gravity tends to pull the fluid lower what can be done with heart failure? Well, sometimes diuretics, which are fluid pills, can compensate to some degree, but the key thing is going to be to decrease the load. That means decrease the body weight, allow the muscle mass to come down to a normal level, and allow the cardiac demand and the metabolism to come down to a normal level as well. And that really can only happen through substantial weight loss. And that's covered in great extent in other videos.